It's almost here. The time of year I patiently wait for. The time of year where horror reigns supreme. Easter. Just kidding. You know I'm talking about Halloween. For as long as I could remember, Halloween has been my absolute favorite holiday. I mean, sure, Christmas is great too, but nothing beats the rush of going door to door when you're a kid, grabbing as much candy as you can in one night. Nothing beats all the October-themed movies and television shows that return from the dead year after year. And most of all, nothing beats the adrenaline-inducing fear you feel from experiencing something terrifying, like a haunted house or an incredibly scary movie. Over the years, my friends and I would try to outdo ourselves in every way possible. We were all extremely competitive. At first, it started with who could garner the most candy on Halloween night. Then, as we got older, it became a game of who could tell the scariest story. Finally, it became who could come up with the most horrifying costume. I would always win the contest, of course. I've just always seemed to have a knack for creating terrifying things in my mind. But of course, age would rear its ugly head and we would all lose interest in our games. We'd be too old for trick-or-treating, too old for costumes, but not old enough for bars and drinking. Well, not legally anyway. Look, I don't condone underage drinking, but it tends to happen whether you want to stop it or not. My point is, my friends and I were in that awkward phase of life where we truly couldn't enjoy Halloween like we used to. In a vain attempt to keep the spirit alive, we would all meet up a couple days of the month, rent a few horror movies, and devour as much candy as our meager incomes could allow. Though me being as obsessive about the holiday as I am, I wanted more out of that. I wanted to feel that rush of fear we used to feel. Something the hundredth viewing of Halloween just wasn't giving us anymore. I know other horror movies have been made, but few have been made well. This year, I wanted it to be different. I wanted to push the boundaries of what this month was all about. The fear, the terror, the unknown. But I was at a loss for how to go about doing so. Now, being a younger guy, I, like I'm sure many of you, spend a lot of time on the internet. Over the years, I have joined quite a few message boards and forums regarding horror and the like. A lot of the threads on those sites were mostly all about which classic horror movie was superior. I found those all pretty boring as everyone knows Michael Myers is the best, hands down. Regardless, I would spend hours searching through posts, people telling stories of how they managed to scare their friends. Most of them would write about how they'd wait in the dark and jump out while their friend was rounding a corner or put a fake spider on them while they slept. Those were all fine for pranks, but none of those really captured my attention. That was until I read one thread that said, I scared my friend so bad, he disappeared. Just reading that title was enough to hook me, so I gave the thread a shot. The user went on to tell about a website that he used which apparently caused scary and unexplained things to happen to their friend before they stopped talking to them and disappeared. They said they went to the police and told them everything. However, when they provided them with the link they apparently used, it was inaccessible, as if the website never existed. Then they mentioned caution, and below the text, provided the link. 90% of the comments on the thread were people saying it was fake, that the link wasn't working at all, that they had just made the entire thing up. I, too, must admit that I was skeptical as well. If this story was actually true, why would they subject the internet to this sort of thing and possibly make more people disappear? My curiosity wouldn't be satisfied until I myself clicked the link. So I did. When the new page popped up, it gave me an error saying the site could not be reached. I laughed at the user's attempt at trying to pull a fast one on us. Just as I was about to click off the page, 
I moved my cursor across it. My cursor changed for a split second, as if I passed over a small hyperlink button. I spent a minute or two trying to locate it. And when I did, I clicked. A new page popped up in front of me. It was a completely black screen with a message in red text. I sighed at the cheesy attempt, but gave it a pass for that clever trick with the hidden link. The site said, Scare your friends. And below that had two buttons. The first said, About. And the second said, Scare. I clicked on the About section first. It brought up a short paragraph that I'll relay now. Welcome user. You have found yourself in the presence of ultimate horror. Here we provide a service unlike any other. A service that will bring you so close to the edge of your mind. You might lose it. Enter the required information. And begin. A little flashy for my taste, but who was I to judge? I then clicked back and selected the only other option. Scare. At the top it said, Enter the information for whom you wish to scare. I chuckled a bit. Then I thought about which of my friends I'd like to scare. After mulling it over in my head for a few minutes, I decided the only person who I thought could handle whatever this thing had to offer was myself. So I filled out all of the info. My name, age, address, etc. Then I hit enter. The screen went black for a few minutes before a new message popped up in red text. It said one word, a common word, but a word that made me feel slightly uneasy. It said, goodbye. Then I waited. Nothing happened. I waited longer and still nothing. I watched some TV while my parents had gone out for the evening. After a few hours, I was about to call it a day and shut off the TV. Just as I did, there was a knock at my front door. I checked the peephole and saw no one outside. I audibly sighed as I thought to myself, was this truly the best they could do? Then the knock on the door sounded again. I again checked and again there was nothing there. But wait. Out of the corner of the peephole, I could see something near the bottom. It looked like a leg. What is that? Somewhat nervous, I cracked open my door ajar, and what I saw made me take a step back. It was a body, and it most definitely wasn't alive anymore. It was a man. His clothes were torn and bloodied. His face was permanently stuck in an expression of terror. His eyes were gray, glassy, and looking up at me as if he had died just then. I slammed my door shut and called the police. They arrived and knocked on my door. This confused me and when I opened the door, the body was gone, replaced by two uniforms standing in front of me. I told them what I saw and they asked me if my parents were around. I said they were out and wouldn't be home until late. Then they lectured me on proper emergency procedure. I told them this wasn't a joke, but they simply gave me a warning and left. That was about a week ago. Every night since then, after my parents went to bed, things got so much worse. I awoke the following night to someone standing outside of my window staring at me. He wore a black outfit like a burglar, but his face didn't look right. When my eyes finally adjusted to the dark, I could actually tell why. He was wearing a face over his own face like some Texas Chainsaw knockoff, though it didn't look like a knockoff to me. He just stared at me, and in a brief moment where the dry air caused me to rub my eyes, he was gone, vanished into the night. The next night, I awoke to someone standing in the corner of my room. It was another man wearing all black. I didn't dare move, for I didn't know what he was going to do but I had my question answered pretty quickly. 
He pulled out a large knife. The blade glistened in the starlight from my window. And he plunged it into his own temple. I could hear the separation of flesh and bone as the blade pushed deeper inward. Though he didn't even flinch. He just maintained his gaze upon me. The man didn't fall. He merely took a step towards me and I bolted from my bed to my parents' room. I woke them up with panic in my voice and dragged them to my bedroom. There was nothing. No man, no knife, not even a single drop of blood on my floor. My parents said that I was watching too many horror movies. It was rotting my brain. But this, this was so much more. The next two nights, nothing actually happened. I thought my trial was finally finished and I could breathe a sigh of relief, finally getting some much needed sleep. Then, last night happened, and it was by far the worst. I went to bed normally, but then a sudden jostling stirred me from my sleep. I was lying on a table in a strange room that I had never been in. Leather straps held me in place, while a harness kept my head rigid and my mouth shut. A dim light hung above as three men stood around me. They each held various surgical tools. One used a clamp to grab my eyelids and lift them off of my eyes. Another revved a bone saw near my toes. I wanted to scream, but the harness wouldn't allow it. The last man walked up with an oversized drill and pressed the drill bit onto my kneecap. Just before they started cutting and sawing and drilling, I passed out. When I awoke, I was back in my own bed. After a panic search of my entire body to make sure everything was intact, I ran to the bathroom and vomited. I spent the day hiding in my room. I've pushed my bookshelf in front of my window and wedged a chair underneath my doorknob. I've been too scared to even move, but I rallied some courage and began to type this out. I wanted you all to know what is happening to me. I don't know who these people are or how they keep doing the things they're doing. I don't know how long this will last, but I can't take much more of it. I want this to stop. I need this to stop. If any of you out there come across a link that leads you to a site that says scare your friends, avoid it. All those people who are unable to access the site, I envy them. If I don't make it through this, pass this message along. Warn as many people as you can. Thank you. And don't forget me.